Hello everyone, it's Crypto Granny again. I hope you're all well looking after yourself, being kind to your families, being kind to your parents, your beautiful pussy cats, your beautiful animals, whatever dog you have, whatever animal you have, and just being kind to people in this world just to make it a very beautiful world. Now please don't forget to subscribe. Really important if you want to come into our competition and say something in terms of a comment. Now today I'm going to talk very quickly in a diagram about SWIFT in four steps, okay? To make it really, really easy for everyone to understand. And this is why RippleNet is so groundbreaking in terms of quick, fast, efficient, costless settlement cash flow within three seconds, okay? Now, I worked as a dealer for years. I worked in financial markets all my life in all different markets. And honestly, what gave me more stress than anything was not dealing in billions of dollars of swaps or billions of dollars of futures or running billions of dollars of fixed income or equities. What gave me more stress than anything was settlements. You have no idea how I used to stress because something was not settling properly within SWIFT. And anyone that's ever worked in financial markets at the professional level where you're managing huge amounts of money on behalf of clients for their super fund or whatever, the stress of lack of settlements was just unbelievable. Because if something wouldn't settle through SWIFT, you would have to adjust your dealing ticket. The client might lose money. You'd have to put it out to a further date. The market might have moved against them. More money cost through because a dumb, clunky 1973 settlement system that's still being used by most of the banks, particularly in Australia at the moment or anywhere else, because of that, it would cause dealers, anyone managing money, a nightmare. I can tell you right, hand on heart, an absolute heart, hand on heart, an absolute nightmare. And anyone that goes out there and says it's a scam doesn't know what they're talking about when we talk about Ripple because Ripple is groundbreaking. And as I said before, it's bigger than 1992 when the internet came out. And I know because I was in Treasury and we got to see the internet, okay? The SWIFT system is the worst on earth. It's old, it's clunky. There have been so many hacks over the years with the SWIFT system, system it's not funny. You know, the last huge hack was, you know, the Bank of Bangladesh, $600 million got taken out of their bank account due to the SWIFT system, okay? Now, Ripple's interledger has had more than 50 million ledgers get processed and transactions, and there's never been a hack. SWIFT is like an old, you know, horse and cart compared to RippleNet, which is like the speedboat. And I'll say it again, RippleNet's technology is unbelievable. And RippleNet and XRP, as far as I'm concerned, will be the number one cryptocurrency in the world. Anyway, enough of that. So let's talk about SWIFT, okay? SWIFT, you know, and I'm not going to tell you what it stands for. You can look it up yourself. You know, it has 11,000 clients, banks and, and big corporates, okay? It's a legacy system, which means it's just an old system, you know, built in COBOL. Ask any programmer about COBOL. Now they can't even find COBOL programmers because they're all dead or they're all 60 or 70. And most of the mainframes and banks everywhere are still built, built in COBOL, right? It's as old as the bloody hills, right? You know, we're talking about, well, 50 years ago, right? So everyone's dead, you know? And it's, you know, and the banks are still operating from it. The ATM machines are still operating from it. Seriously, it, that's how old it is. Okay, so. A corporate, you know, needs to send, and this is how bad it is, right? Say this corporate, you know, they're an Aussie, Aussie corporate, strain, so their currency is Aussie dollars, and they need to pay a company, and let's make it complex here, in Lebanon, right? This is how bad it is, the Middle East, right? The Le Lebanon has, Lebanon has Lebanese pound, okay? And it's hardly transacted, but it is, right? But not many banks transact it. You know, it's not a transactional currency that, you know, is in the top five, like the Australian dollar against the US, or the US yen or the Euro US or whatever. 
you know, it's one of those emerging market uh, foreign currencies. And it's very difficult to find counterparties that can show you a price in Aussie Lebanon pound, right? So, you know, one Aussie dollar, just to give an idea, is worth 11.30, 11.30, Lebanese pound. You get the idea. And they need to pay a corporate in Lebanon, you know? Let's put it down here. Corporate Lebanon, right? Who has to accept uh, Lebanese pound and they're going through the swift system right so the corporate goes to the bank and i'm the dealer at the bank they go to me i work for the national australia bank okay one of the biggest banks in the country in australia right what the hell <laughs> shut up i'm doing a video honestly these this is a car alarm over there fair income don't worry we'll just have to put up with it so I go to my bank and I say, I'm a corporate, and I go, I need to buy Lebanese pound, you know, to pay this corporate. You know, do you, can you make a price for me? And the bank goes, you know, the dealer, so the bank brings me up in treasury, me as a dealer, crypto granny. So I work for the treasury of National Australia Bank, and they ring me, crypto granny, and they say, can you make me a market, a price? in Australian Lebanese pound. And I go, what the hell? You know, we don't, we, bear, we, don't, you know, we don't generally make markets in Lebanese pounds, right? It's not one of our traded currencies. So what happens here, and this is a whole long process before we even get to SWIFT, you know, I have to go to my manager, my boss, and get it signed off at the Asset Liability Committee that I can transact Aussie Lebanese pound for this client because it's an it's an unusual request. We don't always do Lebanese pound, you know, at an Australian bank because it's in the Middle East, right? So we have to put up a paper asking for a credit limit, right? A counterparty limit, uh huh, a settlement limit, a dealer's limit, and this is how it works, guys. And this is what takes the time as well. Using SWIFT, and this is real, because I've worked in it and this happened. A dealer's limit, settlement limit, counterparty, credit limit, whatever, to deal in, Le Le uh, in uh, Lebanese pounds, right? And we also have to think when we do this limit to go to the Asset Liability Committee, you know, the Credit and Risk Department, who sign all the stuff off, what bank are we going to deal with because we have to put up all those for the bank that we're actually dealing with, right? So we find the Bank of Cyprus, right? Will show us a market in Lebanese pound, right? So again, we have to make sure that we have all our limits signed off and our counterparty limits to the Bank of Cyprus. And the reason why that is, is because we wanna make sure that we get our Lebanese pound before we exchange the Aussie dollars to them. There's two cash flows here. Now you can see the problem, right? And this is with SWIFT, right? Under, they use SWIFT, NAB uses SWIFT, right? So this will take time, this takes time. Time in that, you know, it could be two days, could be three days, depending on how busy everyone is, to get those limits in place, okay? has to go to the credit department. They have to do an assessment on the Bank of Cyprus. You know, are they stable? What's their credit rating? You know, we're, lend we're giving them money. They've got to give us money back. What happens if SWIFT only settles one side of the leg of the deal? In other words, we give them Aussie and we don't get the Lebanese pound, right? So we have an exposure and the directors of the bank are not going to be happy if this was a $5 million deal and suddenly I've lost $5 million of Aussie dollars. You see what I'm saying? Because SWIFT has been known to process one side of the leg and not give us the other side of the leg being Lebanese pounds, right? This is how bad this system is. And like I said to you, as a dealer, I have never had more stress than the settlement side. And having to get on the SWIFT system and making sure everything was right, it was a nightmare, right? An absolute nightmare. So, you know, assuming that that all went nicely for two days, the corporate's still waiting, 
And I call back my corporate and I say, yes, I can do this deal now because everything's been signed off with the Bank of Cyprus, right? We've got a small limit. The corporate wants five million Aussie, you know, to be converted to the amount, you know, so it'd be five million by that Lebanese uh, pound to go to, you know, the other corporate, right? So we've got everything, we've got everything signed off and now we do the deal at the treasury level with the Bank of Cyprus. With my, I would deal with these guys, the treasury dealers, right? And these guys also, the Bank of Cyprus treasury dealers, would also have to have credit limits, counterparty limits, dealers limits and settlement limits for me, right? And that would take time if they didn't have those limits for me, right? So those guys would have to get limits to deal with me at NAP. You know, those four limits, one, two, three, four, and a bit more. So again, so that might take another two days, right? You know, so we're already looking at four days. The client's waiting for four days already. And this is the thing, Ripple does not have this problem, right? So the structure of having used Swift, it takes a long time because the dealers have to get settlement limits and credit limits in place and go through risk and you know there's some liability committee and all that sort of thing okay so then the deal gets done because i can talk to these guys the treasury i'm the dealer there and they're the dealer there and i go to these guys the dealer at the bank of cyprus i want to sell aussie dollars yeah I'll put it in here i want to sell aussie dollars right five million and I want to buy the equivalent uh, Lebanese pound, right? Which is going to be five million by eleven three zero, whatever that is, right? At a at a particular rate, and we're assuming it's eleven three zero, right? Uh, and there's an internal deal to this, which I'll, I I will charge the corporate, and I'll make money from the corporate. Okay, me is the dealer. I'll charge the corporate a different rate. I'll charge the corporate, you know, it's going to cost them more, 11.80, right? So the corporate's going to have to pay me more money for me to deal with them. And the Bank of Cyprus will take their cut as well. So say the corporate's already got to pay 25 grand because they're using the SWIFT system. Because I'm going to show them a different rate to the rate I get set with the Bank of uh, Cyprus being a dealer for NAB. I've got to make my money as well, right, for the risk. Okay, so the deal, because it's an unusual deal, because it's not liquid currency, normally any liquid currency deal is trade date, which is a trade date today, whatever that date is, say it's the 26th or the 8th, I don't know what date it is. This would get settled with any normal deal, if it was US yen or something, or US, uh, Aussie US, you know, within 20, uh, two days, right? In the olden days, it was three through the SWIFT system. Now it's supposed to be two days minimum, uh, right? Two days. But because this is an unusual deal and it's, and it's Lebanese pound, we would effectively say, you know, when we deal with the Bank of Cyprus, we would say, you know, trade date plus seven days because SWIFT will have trouble loading it in their system and everything else and the settlements people and whatever, right? So we would say, and this is a dealer doing a ticket, these deals would do a ticket, I would do a ticket, and it goes, the settlements people will gender it into SWIFT, right? We go maybe 10 days, right? Trade day to day plus 10 days from that date there, all right? And whatever that date is, you know? Say 31, seven, so it becomes the seventh of the ninth, right? For settlement, cash settlement, right? So let's go back, let's go back here. So already the client, the corporate that needed to pay someone, we're looking at four days and we're looking at 10. That's providing everything goes to plan and everyone does their job straight away. Don't forget banks get millions of transactions a day, millions, right? And so, you know, this could be left for a couple of days because we have a lot of other things to do as well, being a dealer, right? So we're already looking at 14 days here, you know? So the deal's done, then what happens is you have, I know this is getting very messy and I apologise for that, you have the SWIFT terminals, right? The SWIFT terminal, just like a little box. 
that my settlement people will sit on. They have my deal and they will put that in the deal, which will, with the message to the Bank of Cyprus settlement people as well about the deal, okay? And then Bank of Cyprus, we've told Bank of Cyprus, this money has to be paid in Lebanon, right? This hasn't finished yet. And this is how clunky and old the SWIFT system is and the problems we had as dealers and with settlements, okay? So the Bank of Cyprus has got my Aussie dollars. I've got the, Le the, the Lebanon uh, currency, uh, but I've said to Bank of Cyprus, who can I settle through? Who can I pass this on through so that it gets to this corporate in Lebanon? I don't, I don't have a branch in Lebanon being NAP. I don't have a subsidiary in Lebanon where I can pass it through to one of our internal offices to pay the corporate that has a Lebanese bank account. So I have to find a correspondent bank, okay? Now, I would first of all go to Bank of Cyprus because I'd say, Bank of Cyprus, do you have a correspondent bank in Lebanon that we can pass the money through to pay the corporate, okay? Because I don't have a banking relationship in Lebanon. And it so happens Bank of Cyprus says yes. So then Bank of Cyprus acts as a correspondent bank for me, the NAB. I know this sounds complex, but just stay with me. And that correspondent bank would be Arab Bank, right? Arab Bank, which is a correspondent bank, right? Correspondent bank. Forget my terrible writing. So the pounds, the Lebanese pounds, and you're assuming these guys have limits with themselves, you know, the credit limits, the settlement limits, there, and you hope so, otherwise it's going to be more delayed. The pounds will go to Arab Bank, then they will then hopefully, hopefully this client has an Arab Bank account, or if they don't, they've got, say, a Lebanon account, say, Bank of Lebanon, the Arab Bank would have to send the money to the Bank of Lebanon to pay this corporate. That the original corporate that went to the National Australia Bank uh, needed to pay them in Lebanese dollars, okay? Now, even if this is good and everything's done pronto, you're still looking at a minimum 14 days, minimum. But the thing is, you know, how long would it take for these guys, because a deal could be done T plus two or T plus three. So you, you get what I'm saying here. The fact that the correspondent bank has to receive the pounds, Lebanese pounds, that's gonna take another two or three days. And then another two or three days to send it to the Arab bank in Lebanon, right? So say if everything goes according to plan, we're now looking at another three days here for the Bank of Cyprus to send the pounds, Lebanese pounds, the Arab Bank, who's a correspondent bank. Then we're looking at another three days for them to send it to their branch in Lebanon, right? Another three days. And then to finally pay the Lebanese corporate in Lebanon. So all up, and we've got costs associated with all that, right? The minute it goes through a correspondent bank and another bank and this bank from here, this corporate keeps paying. They pay through me, they pay through Bank of Cyprus, they pay through Arab Bank and the branch in Lebanon, right? Four banks as a minimum, right? Now, four banks as a minimum for this trade of five million Australian dollars, you know what? Under SWIFT, it would have cost them at least 45,000 Aussie dollars, right? On top of the five million, right? If they did the same deal through... Um, through RippleNet, it's going to cost not even 20 cents US, right? 
So all up, this overall deal has taken three, three is six, plus 14, T plus 20 days within SWIFT. And that's assuming nothing else happened, right? Everything went according to plan. But you can see in that situation how many stuff ups there could be. Don't forget, every deal is done, there's another terminal with a message from the SWIFT operators, the settlement operators, telling each other they've got a deal happening. And back, there's another SWIFT terminal thing, right? So all these t people that are on SWIFT, on the message systems, all have to be there available at the right time to collect these messages to confirm these deals, right? It's so manual, it's a joke. So just for the, the change in time from Australia to, you know, to wherever this is, Bank of Cyprus, Middle East, or whatever, to, you know, different time periods as well, also delay the deal. And every time the deal's delay, a new treasury deal has to be done because the time period on the foreign exchange deal has changed. And that's my point. SWIFT is such an old, clunky, old system and dealing a settlements issue like this, I can tell you from a front office dealer's perspective, is a nightmare. And that is why Ripple's technology is revolutionary, absolutely revolutionary. Because this 20 odd days, and the bank would have to, all the banks would have to fund this deal through their Nostro and Vostro accounts to top it off, okay? And that's a whole different story again. Right? Anyway, guys, I hope you understand this because it's it's a nightmare. Trust me, it's a nightmare. I've been there. I know what it's like on the settlements prime. So anyway, I've talked enough. Crypto Granny, really look after yourself and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you very much.